today's lecture is going to be on the uh, regularization network, regularization network, something which we intended to discuss in the last class itself okay, and we have already developed the necessary <coughs> theories pertaining to it, uh, but we will be showing that how the regularization networks really looks like and then we will be going over to the next topic that is generalized radial basis function. Again, I think we have been spending uh, quite a few lectures on the radial basis function. I think last uh, five or six lectures uh, have been uh, devoted to the RBF and uh, we have to cover some more of the topics okay, before the end of this uh, semester course load that is 40 lecture course. Okay. So, we um, have to draw our conclusions uh, etcetera quite uh, soon about the RBF and proceed to the next chapter. Anyway, so today I think we are going to exclusively devote to this uh, topic that we have uh, I mean as our plan for today. Now, you remember that in the last lecture we were discussing I mean when we were discussing about the regularization okay, the final solution that we had presented was of this nature that we were obtaining I mean let us concentrate on the equation 4 that we had got okay, where the function f lambda of x j, x j being the input vector okay, that is actually expressed as a summation of w i times g of x j comma x i where g happens to be a green function <laughs> happens to be a greens function centered around x i okay. and what we have to do is that we are finding the response of the function at the uh, point x j. So, it is g of x j comma x i with x i as the center and with the weights w i okay, which is nothing but the difference between the d i and the f x i the desired and the actual output okay. and it is uh, divided by 1 upon lambda where lambda is the regularization parameter. So, this is the form that we had got a summation of i is equal to 1 to n and from uh, this we can uh, construct the regularization network okay, where you can well understand that the inputs will be the x i s I mean the patterns will be the input and as the output we will be getting this f lambda of x j. So, if we see that uh, the structure of the regularization network it should look something like this. Let us say that we have got the inputs where these are x 1, x 2. So, these are the individual elements of the input vector. So, when I write as small x 1, small x 2, etcetera, they are nothing but the individual inputs. This is x m minus 1, which is the last part 1 and the last is x m, where we are assuming m to be the dimensionality of the input. right? And we are going to have the Green's functions realized here. Okay. So, here we could have some Green's function realizations and can you tell me that how many Green's function do we have to draw out here? How many Green's function? Equal to n, equal to n, where n is the number of patterns that we are feeding to the system. Okay. So, each of the pattern is going to be m dimensional vector and we are having n such patterns and the equation which we had written you see that here the summation is for i is equal to 1 to n. Okay. It is i is equal to 1 to n and x j comma x i. So, what we have to do is to add up the responses of n different I mean uh, n different weighted responses of this uh, uh, Green's function that is what we are adding up. Okay. So, what we have to do is to have here n number of such uh, Green's function computational blocks okay, where the centers will be like x 1, x 2 etcetera up to x n. So, this will be the 
Green's function g, where we will be having Green's function of some input, okay, but centered around x 1, okay. like that this will be let us say centered around some x j and this is centered around some x n. Okay. And what we have to do is that for each of these Green's function computational unit, we will be having all the m inputs, all the m elements of the input will have to be fed to this g function, because the g will be computed over that vector, okay, because x 1 to x m will compose the input vector and g will be computed on that vector centered around another pattern vector which is there. Okay. So, what we have to do is to draw the connections like this. Okay. Here we draw the dotted lines indicating that there will be altogether m such inputs. right? And very similarly, all these inputs will be connected to the other Green's function networks as well. Similarly, the last one also we should receive x 1, x 2 up to x m minus 1, lastly x m. Okay. So, these will be the responses of the Green's function computational unit and what do we have to do? We have to simply weight it okay, with the individual weights. So, these have to be multiplied by w 1. In fact, we do not uh, draw the arrows out here. Okay. So, this will be another unit which will be linear, a linear computational unit okay, will be kept over here, where this output that we are having, this is the first Green's function output, this will be multiplied by w 1. Okay. The second Green's function likewise will be multiplied by w 2 and if this one we take as the jth Green's function computational unit, then this has to be multiplied by w j. Okay. And if this is the last Green's function computational unit that is g centered around x n, okay, then this has to be, this response has to be multiplied by w n. right? And all these responses will be added up in these linear input, in, in this linear unit and linear computational unit and then we will be having f of x vector. And what is x vector? x vector is nothing but the vector representation of the inputs that we are feeding. So, this is the structure of the regularization network. Now, this has got one assumption of course, that the g of x comma x i. Okay. I did not have space to write down this. So, instead of making the g's look clumsy, I mean I simply write g, I mean although I try to write here. So, let me write g within this boxes and then actual computation will be g of x comma x i. Okay. And the essential condition for this is that this has to be positive definite for all i. Okay. So, this has to be positive definite for all i. Okay. So, it is quite a simple in structure. In fact, I mean uh, this is the structure of the regularization network. Okay. It is nothing but the simple network representation of the equation that we had got, the equation number 4 that we had got okay, as expressing the f of x j as a summation. Okay. It is just a network representation of this. All right. Now, this is uh, I, I mean this looks pretty similar to uh, what a radial basis function network looks like. Now, uh, we have discussed about the radial basis function okay, without of course, really drawing the actual network structure. Now, here you can see that the number of hidden nodes that we are having in this network is that there are n number of hidden nodes, okay, where n is equal to the number of patterns that we are feeding to this. Okay. Whereas, in the radial basis function network, okay, we are not having n hidden nodes, okay. we are not putting that restriction that it has to be n, okay. 
we can have a number of hidden nodes okay, which is equal to m 1. Now, we discussed that typically m 1 has to be of a dimensionality higher than that of m that is the input dimensionality, because normally we are mapping from a lower dimensional input space to a relatively higher dimensional hidden space. All right. So, uh, instead of n if we take the number of hidden nodes to be m 1 okay, that the total number of hidden nodes, then the radial basis function network okay, would look something very similar to this. In fact, there the g's will be replaced by the phi's. Okay. In fact, I have been discussing, uh, I mean I discussed last time also that the difference between the phi's and the g's are that in the phi that is the radial basis function, we are simply doing the interpolation okay, where we are putting a restriction that the surface that we are going to interpolate is going to pass through the given set of points, whereas in the case of regularization, we are not putting that constraint. What we are instead saying is that the uh, surface that we are going to reconstruct okay, has to minimize the functional okay, that takes into account of both. That is to say the uh, actual cost function as also the, um, uh, I mean the uh, variation that is to say a uh, smooth differential. Okay, that is what we showed. So, now uh, very similarly a radial basis function network would have looked like this. Okay. So, there also we would have got x 1, x 2 okay, up to here x m minus 1 and the last is x m and then we would have got here the hidden neurons, okay, the hidden nodes. Okay where there will be m 1 such hidden RBF nodes. So, these also, so these all will compute the radial basis function. So, we can write here phi okay, indicating that all phi's are computing the radial basis function and very similar to what we had done for the regularization network, the radial basis function network will contain this. Okay, in fact, this realization directly follows from a very similar series that we had obtained earlier. I mean, I think few classes back we had obtained a very similar series of f x equal to i is equal to 1 to m 1 w i f the f matrix that we had got. Okay. So, it is simply that, that realization. So, x 1 to x m going over to every phi's. Okay. All right. And then we are going to have the output. Okay. And in fact, here the output neuron will not only add up this, okay, but also we are going to have a bias. So, here if we take phi to be equal to 1, okay, then we will be having here w 0 which is equal to the bias and then we will be having here w 1 okay, and if this is the jth radial basis function, this is w g and this is the last basis function, uh, last uh, RBF computational unit. So, this has to be W m 1, this has to be W m 1 and this is going to realize the f of x. So, this one is actually called the radial basis function network. So, this looks uh, very similar to what the regularization network is. Only thing is that here instead of uh, m 1, we are considering n. Now, the question is that uh, yes, because uh, if we have to obtain the solution of the regularization equation, okay, then uh, the, the optimal solution that we had obtained. Okay, definitely had got 
n number of such turns, where n is the number of uh, patterns that we had fed to the system. Okay. And in fact, in the matrix representation also, you could very easily see that we had got the matrix that involved the G matrix. Now, G matrix is essentially an n by n matrix okay. and then we had uh, to obtain an inversion of that, uh, that G plus lambda i, we had to obtain the inverse matrix to that okay. and that one was having actually, uh, I mean if, when n is very large, okay, then this requires actually n cube number of computation for the computation of the inverse to that matrix. So, if n the number is very large, if the number of patterns is extremely large, in that case the computation of the regularization involving the Green's function okay, requires enormous amount of computation okay, because it will polynomially increase with n and so and typically n is going to be large because if our given set of points is large okay, and the essential requirement there is that we have to design that with every uh, such uh, input pattern we have to design a Green's function that is centered around that pattern okay. and in that case only we can obtain an optimal solution. Now, the question is that if we impose a practical implementational restriction to it, especially in the case where this n is going to be very, very large. Okay. In that case, while designing the network, instead of designing with n number of hidden neurons, okay, we arrive at a figure, let us say m 1, which is typically much less as compared to that of n. Okay. And if we can obtain a network okay, with m 1 number of hidden nodes using this function only, if we obtain uh, m 1 number of such uh, hidden nodes okay, and if we can solve the regularization network that does not involve n number of terms, but rather m 1 number of terms, where m 1 is the number up to which we go. I mean, instead of taking all the n Green's function, we take an m 1 subset of it. Okay. We take m 1 number of Green's function and we try to solve the problem okay, using those m 1 as the centers. In that case, yes, we are not obtaining an exact solution, we are not obtaining an optimal solution to it, but definitely some suboptimal solution that is what we are getting. Okay which could be used okay, for the practical implementation of regularization. So, we will go into the theory of this okay, which is known as the generalized radial basis function. So, we are now going to discuss about the next topic of the day which is generalized RBF or the generalized radial basis function and the essence is that there we uh, uh, I mean avoid having n number of such uh, uh, I mean hidden neurons okay instead we design it with m 1 number of hidden neurons hidden neurons okay where m 1 is less than I mean mathematically we should say that m 1 should be less than or equal to n. I mean when m 1 is equal to n, then it leads to the optimal solution which we had op already obtained. So, now oh, you remember that we had got a solution of this form. I mean we had to obtain a solution of f x equal to summation of w i phi i x okay, and where we had to add up i is equal to 1, 2. In fact, if it is uh, I mean uh, with uh, uh, n number of patterns, we would have gone up to n, but here we are going up to m 1. Okay. And in fact, I mean as a solution to the regularization equation, if we assume a 
uh, function of this nature, where we are not taking n terms mind you, we are taking m 1 number of turns. Uh, taking m 1 number of turns obviously means that it is not the optimal solution, it is definitely some kind of an approximated solution. And as a new symbol to the approximated solution, we write it down as f star of x. Okay. So, this is the approximate solution. So, this is the approximate solution to the regularization problem. So, approximate solution to regularization problem. Okay. Now, in this case, uh, we I mean the set phi i that we are considering okay, that is a new set of basis functions. Okay. Now, mind you we are not writing it as g, we are writing it as phi i's. Okay. Why? Because with g as basis function we required n number of terms. Right? With g, we would have required n such g's, but here instead of using n such g's, we are using m1 number of some basis functions. Okay. I mean, this uh, may not be the uh, radial basis functions which we had used for interpolation purpose strictly, okay. but I mean, here definition wise, we can say that uh, this phi i x, the set of such phi i x with i is equal to 1 to up to m 1. Okay. This is a new set of basis functions, is a new set of basis functions which are linearly independent. Okay. Now, with uh, the radial basis function in mind, okay, with R B F in mind, okay, we can set the phi i x to be equal to G, the Green's function of, we can say norm of x minus T i. Okay. I mean, in fact, we can write either g as x comma t i or g of norm x minus t i whatever way we represent. Okay. It, re, it does not really matter. Okay. Now, here i is equal to 1, 2 up to m 1 not n. All right. So, these are the set of uh, centers. So, what are the centers of the um, basis functions? all these t i s are the centers. Okay. Now, this particular representation actually guarantees that in the case of m 1 equal to n, in case of m 1 equal to n, we will be having t i equal to x i okay, for i is equal to 1, 2 up to n. Whereas, when we are having a number m 1 that is less than n, when we are obtaining m 1 less than or equal to n, then the centers here remain as t i, they are not exactly the x i. I mean we have somehow designed m 1 such different centers, okay, which may not be exactly matching with the patterns that we are feeding. There are m 1 such centers indexed as T 1, T 2, etcetera up to T m 1. Only in the special case of m 1 equal to n, they become T i is become equal to x i s, in which case the all the n number of patterns that we are having, they are individually the centers of the Green's function. Okay. Now, uh, what we have to design as this function is that in the case of m 1 equal to n, the correct solution should be consistently recovered. In fact, that is very much possible, because what we will be having in that case is, 
that phi i x in such case will be equal to g of x comma x i and g of x comma x i if we substitute over here and if m 1 is equal to n then we are obtaining the regularization solution that we already obtained. So, this representation is consistent with means as a special case taking m 1 equal to n this f star x will become equal to actual f f x of f lambda x. Okay. But otherwise we are taking the approximated representation. So, in this representation okay, we can write down f star of x equal to summation i is equal to 1 to m 1 w i g x comma t 1 okay, which is uh, which is equal to t i sorry x comma t i okay, and this can also be represented as i is equal to 1 to m 1 w i g of norm of x minus T i, whichever way of representation one chooses. Okay. Now, this could be represented, I mean the um, expansion of this could, could be actually leading to i is equal to, now the uh, approximating function f star of x if we take. Okay. Now, f star of x mind you has got two terms, okay. the basic equation has got two terms, one is the uh, standard error term and the next one is the uh, regularization term. Regularization term is d of f star in this case, okay. whereas the standard error term is going to be if we take the d i as the desired input, in that case it will be what d i minus this one, this one is going to be the actual outputs. So, d i minus okay, if I take i to be the index over here, then while summing it up we should use a different index. So, j is equal to 1 to m 1 of w j g of x i minus t j, x i minus T j. Okay. This term and we have to square this thing up and this has to be I mean this is the error for what? This is the error for the ith pattern. So, we have to add it up for i is equal to 1 to n not m 1 because n is the number of patterns that we are feeding to the system, whereas m 1 is the number of hidden nodes that we had chosen, the number of Green's function with which we are going to approximate the regularization solution. So, here the index is m 1, whereas outside here the index is I mean the summation is up to n. So, please note this. Uh, so, this is the standard error term and then we have the regularization term as lambda times norm of d f star, this as the squared norm of this. Okay. Now, we look at the first term of this expansion, okay, the standard error term. Okay. This can be easily represented in a better form using the matrix and how do we do it? Very similar to what we did earlier that means to say that defining a d vector where d vector will contain all these that is d 1, d 2 up to d n the desired outputs okay, they, they will be composing the d vector and then here we are composing a g matrix. Now, g matrix you tell me that if this is the summation representation okay, we are obtaining here g x i comma t j. Now, when we come to t j that is the centers, there are m 1 number of such centers, but coming to this x i that is to say the first argument of this. Okay. Coming to this x i, how many x i are there? There are n number of x i, 
but there are m 1 number of t j's. So, how many elements are there in that G matrix that we are going to compose? M yes. So, here we are going to have n by m as the matrix composition where n is the number of patterns that is x 1 to x n. Okay. They will compose the rows of the matrix and t 1 to uh, t m 1s okay, they will be along the column of the matrix. So, we define a matrix G okay, which is not a square matrix anymore. Last time the G matrix was a was an n by n square matrix whereas, he, in this case it is going to be n by m 1 <coughs> non square matrix. So, here this will be G the first element will be G of x 1 comma t 1 the second element will be G of x 1 comma t 2 okay. like that the last column will be G of x 1 comma t m 1 right. And now coming to the second row, it will be G x 2 comma T 1, G x 2 comma T 2, the last will be G x 2 comma T m 1, like that we go on, the last row will be G of x n comma T 1, G of x n comma T 2 the last will be g of x n comma t m 1. Okay. So, this composes our n by n matrix. So, this is n by m 1 matrix for g not a square matrix anymore. So, this is the Green's function matrix and then w which is equal to here how many elements will be there with the w factor? m 1 number of elements will be there. So, it will be w 1, w 2 up to w m 1 determining the dimension of the w is very easy because as many hidden neurons as you have in the system you have to add up the responses weighted responses of all these hidden neurons. So, there are m, m 1 number of hidden neurons. So, necessarily there will be m 1 number of synaptic weights which will be associated with it. So, this will be w 1 to w m 1 and since it is to be represented in a form like this, we have to take the transpose. Now, uh, actually one property that we are getting here is that last time we had obtained G matrix as a symmetric matrix, okay. whereas in this case G is no longer a symmetric matrix because it is not a square matrix anymore. Okay. And last time we had n element w vector, here we are having m 1 element w vector. Okay. So, these are the two things that we are observing. Now, taking care of the second term okay, uh, that is to say the regularization term d of f star, okay, this can be represented very conveniently in the form of the inner product representation in the Hilbert space, which we had already done last time. Okay. So, writing in, in this form and then doing the simplifications, we should obtain the expression for d f star like this. So, this is the differential operated on the f star that is the approximating function d f star, I mean f star. So, taking the differential of that and we have to compute d, d f star square, okay, the square of that. So, which in the inner product representation should be d f star comma d f star, the inner product with itself in the Hilbert space and this could be represented now okay, by making use of the adjoint property. Okay. By making use of the adjoint property, we can write it as this form of an inner product i is equal to 1 to m 1, this one can be written as follows i is equal to 1 to m 1 w i g x comma t i. Okay. In fact, this form as you can see is the representation of f star okay, directly because f stars, uh, I mean f star has got a 
term like this and then we can write it down I mean making use of the adjoint we can write it down as d star d of this i is equal to 1 to m 1 okay, w i g x comma t i okay, and we take a I take an inner product of this and this in the Hilbert space. Okay, this on simplification leads to this sort of a summation j is equal to summation j is equal to 1 to m 1 summation i is equal to 1 to m 1 w j w i g of t j comma t i sorry t j comma t i. So, this is the representation that we are getting by simplification and in fact this could be so this is t j comma t i mind you and this in the form of matrix one can matrix vector one can represent it as w transpose as the vector w transpose is nothing but the transpose of the w vector that we have already defined and then there will be a term corresponding to this g and mind you here this is a double summation that involves m 1 in the inner loop m 1 in the outer loop also. So, in the matrix form equivalently for this g what we are getting is an m 1 by m 1 matrix. Okay. So, this being an m 1 by m 1 matrix we can write this thing in the form of a new matrix g 0. Okay. We are going to write down the g 0's representation soon. So, this will be of the form w transpose g 0 w. Okay. This will be the matrix representation of this d f square term. Okay. So, that I think the first term we have already got which is nothing but w g okay, that is the first term representation and the second term representation is w uh, transpose g w okay, where g w is going to be whereas this g o sorry g o in this case is going to be like this it is g of t 1 comma t 1 okay, g of t 1 comma t 2 and last will be g of t 1 comma t m 1. Okay. And then the second row will be g of t 2 comma t 1. No, because what we are doing is that the centers there are m 1 centers which we are writing along the columns and there are m 1 number of uh, inputs considering over here. So, which is becoming g of t 2 t 1 here this will be g of t 2 t 2 up to here g of t 2 t m 1. Okay. And the last row will be g of t m 1 t 1 this will be g of t m 1 t 2 and this one will be g of t m 1 t m 1. So, this will be our g 0 matrix representation. All right. Now, that means to say what? Uh, that means to say that uh, we are having now you see we have the term like this d minus w j g. Okay. We were taking a square of that. So, essentially in the matrix representation you remember that we had a matrix representation earlier also. Okay. Now, essentially uh, yeah. So, 
if we minimize okay, the minimization of this minimization of this f star okay, minimization of f star that is what we are attempting okay, yields what this will yield us g transpose g plus lambda g 0 okay, all of them are in the matrix. So, g transpose g plus lambda g 0 times the w vector is equal to g transpose d vector. Okay. I think uh, this one uh, you should get uh, here what you can see is that yeah we are taking the square of this right. So, essentially this one becomes uh, lambda square is W transpose, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, actually D F square we are already getting as W transpose G 0 W, okay. on differentiating yes, yes. So, uh, now this is what we have got as the minimization equation. Now, what we have got is that we have to solve for this w. Okay. Now, the solution of this we can obtain only in an approximation, uh, I mean only in approximated sense. Now, what happens is that as the regularization parameter lambda approaches 0. So, as lambda approaches 0, okay, then the weight vector becomes what? That we can find out from here that the weight vector in accordance with this equation what we are showing as lambda tends to 0 the weight vector w is equal to g transpose g okay, which is and we have to take the inverse of this g transpose d. Is it clear from this? You see as we make lambda tending to 0, all right, this, uh, this term becomes the left hand side terms becomes g transpose g w. Okay. Now, this g, g transpose g should now go to the other side as inverse. So, it will be g transpose g inverse times g transpose d. So, this whole term g transpose g inverse g t. Okay, this could be considered to be, I mean you see the dimensionality of this, this g transpose g is going to be of what dimension? This is going to be uh, g, 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 g transpose m 1, yes, m 1 by m 1, yes. So, g transpose g again m 1 by m 1 and take the inverse of this and then you are multiplying it by g, g is what? g is m 1 by n. I mean j g, g transpose is m 1 by n and d is n dimensional vector and we get the m 1 dimensional solution to this problem. So, w is of dimension uh, m 1. So, this equation should solve for w. Now, this term I mean what we had written as the product of this is written as the pseudo inverse of the matrix G. So, this will be written as g plus. So, defining that g plus is equal to g transpose g okay, inverse of that. Okay, this is the is the pseudo inverse of matrix g. No, that is under the condition that lambda tends to 0. We are making this term regularization term very small. Okay. Otherwise, there is a contribution from this lambda g 0 term also. Okay. Actually speaking, the strict solution for w will involve this also, 
but assuming that this contribution is very small we can take it to be as g transpose g. So, under that assumption w is equal to pseudo inverse of g d. Okay. So, this is the uh, solution where we are taking the functional to be f star of x instead of f of x. So, instead of f of x when we take f star of x and minimize it up to m 1 number of terms, okay, then the corresponding solution comes in this form. I mean we had obtained you remember that we had obtained last time that w uh, solution was g inverse I mean not g inverse exactly it was g plus lambda i that inverse we had considered. Uh, whereas, here it is coming out to be in the form of the pseudo inverse. Okay. Uh -huh. G T G. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, right, right. Very, very correct. Yeah, yes. I, I had omitted this term. Very correct. This, this whole thing is the pseudo inverse. Right. Thank you for pointing out. Any questions pertaining to this? Regularization function and the generalized RBF. Yes, we are not considering the smoothing term. I, I, think, I think somebody already pointed out that if we take this smoothing term, okay, I mean this is under the condition that lambda is considered to be 0, lambda tends to 0. In that case, it is a pseudo inverse directly. Otherwise, if you are considering lambda, then also the solution is possible. Then what happens that w will become equal to this whole terms inverse this whole terms inverse times g t times d, okay, where we should not have told this to be the pseudo inverse. We can tell this as a this whole term as a pseudo inverse only when lambda tends to 0. Okay. So, thank you for today. So, we will uh, have some discussion pertaining to R B F that is to say a comparison between the radial basis function and multilayered perceptron which we will be covering in the coming class and then we will be going over to the new chapter which is the principal component analysis that we intend to do in the from the next class onwards. Thank you very much.